Hey guys, John with Off-Grid Homesteading. Today is November the 29th. I uh, just wanted to give you, just kind of show you where we're at with the um, DIY septic system. This is uh, build part 39. Uh, kind of finishing up things we got here. So one thing that's uh, unique and different that we did with this, uh, which you can't do with the trailer because it was already um, already kind of pre-built, is our vent stack system and um, the uh, basically the venting system going along with the septic and the gray water. We're actually kind of running these together for a certain period of time uh, in these lines and then they're gonna, the gray water is actually going to split off and then go to uh, helping to keep our uh, pond, uh, pond filled after a filter um, that we're going to be putting in to you know, take some of the sediment and stuff out of the kitchen, bathroom, uh, shower, things like that. So let me show you um, what this looks like. Okay, so down here is our four inch uh, pipe system. Um, that is for the uh, toilet. So that's coming down. This uh, pipe that's coming off here is part of our vent stack. And you can see that's tying in um, directly to this vent stack. Sorry right there. Uh, this line here is coming from the kitchen drain. So kitchen drain coming in right there. This is the um, bathroom, uh, t uh, what do you call it, the uh, tub and stuff. And that's going in here and then from the other side of this, from the other side there, that's from the bathroom sink. So it's all coming down here and basically draining. This is a vent stack, pretty much vent stack here for pressure relief. And then this is coming into a, a little 15 uh, degree T here, or a 15 degree to another 15 degree here to bring it into the trench at the right angle. You see. And then we're going to take the uh, four inch line from here and directly connect that into into this pipe. You're going to have a clean out here. I don't know exactly how high that, that's going to be. It might even be lower than that. And then we're going to have the skirting here for the trailer. Right there. So let me get in line with this so you can see what's going on. So pretty much we've got line going straight down. Our tank and everything is going to be down there. That's about 80 feet from here. And the uh, the backhoe is probably about another 30 feet or so past it. I needed to go another 30 feet past that because uh, that's where our lateral lines and stuff are going to go. And you can see where the gray water is kind of finishing right here. We're, we're going to angle it off uh, this direction here, and then um, it's going. There's going to be. There's, there's already kind of like a little pond, natural pond that started here, so we're just going to expand that a little bit. Um, so it's kind of filling up an area where the ducks and stuff can go uh, do their thing. So um, basically dug this, got this at the right angle here. We're sloping down all the way to the tank out here. I ended up not wanting to use one of those little water tote thingies like that one right there. Let's see. Like that little water guy right there because uh, I didn't want to deal with having to put the um, metal and stuff around it to keep it from collapsing. So. We were donated. <clears throat> we went and actually deinstalled it from another uh, camper. That's where we got the house, uh, one of the room additions uh, material. Um, but this is about just under 300 gallons. And um, I'm going to put the entry port somewhere up top here, as high as I can get, so that it actually dumps directly in based on my angle, uh, depending on what angle and stuff I can get, um, just to keep this as high as possible. <laughs> as my entry port here. So that is then going to go into this tank. <clears throat> There's my exit port 
Now inside here, I'm also going to have a 90 degree swoop. I'm going to actually connect into it and then rotate up so I can get my uh, exit port um, up there lower than the input port here, but higher than most of the other water so that just uh, the, the water sediment is going to go to the bottom and the liquid is, is going to come out from the top as uh, basically clean liquid. And, well, clean er than the settled stuff. And then we're going to go down here in the trench. We got um, one, two, three sets of pipe that are solid. So you got um, basically no uh, leaching and stuff happening close to the tank. Moving that down here a little bit. And then um, I wanted to have uh, 30 feet at least of the uh, leach field, maybe 30 to 50, we'll see, of the perforated pipe. Uh, actually, sorry, sorry, go back again. Two feet, 20 feet of solid pipe to bring the material away from the tank. And we got one, two, three, four. So 40 feet of uh, my leach field because we're only dealing with one toilet right there and that's it. <laughs> So, hi honey, what's going on little baby? Hi, what's going on with you? Hi, how are you? Juice car is still available. If anybody would like to give us a call, Oski Posky is 12 weeks old right now. He is so awesome. He's a good little baby. He's a little Australian Shepherd. Yes, he is. And he is awesome. So, you guys need to give us a call and see if he might fit your family. Thank you. Um, so anyway, the reason the backhoe is again stuck here is because the shaft that drives the hydraulic pump, now the hydraulic pump is actually down here in the front. So this whole grill, these, all these weights, 800 pounds of weights or whatever have to be taken off. And then this shaft uh, that is right there is supposed to have a key in it. There's supposed to be a key that goes and, and latches uh, this shaft into this plate. Well, if the uh, shaft isn't long enough and the key isn't long enough, it wears off the piece right there. This will continue to keep spinning. This stops spinning. The minute that stops spinning, none of the hydraulics and, uh, and stuff will work. It'll still drive, but you can't drive forward with that stuck in the ground. You can't lift these up, and you can't lift that up. So, not a very fun experience. So I actually welded it, uh, whacked the crap out of that bar into that plate, and then welded it in there, and it lasted from there, digging that whole hole, whole hole, all the way to here. So I might be able to do it one more time, take that whole thing apart, took about three hours, and uh, get that thing well, then put it back, or I could take it over to my buddy's house, have him rebuilt, and hopefully it'll last a lot longer. So I'm pretty excited about this. Um, I used a four inch, um, the coupler, the same coupler that I'm using to connect the pipes and stuff together. I used a forage coupler, um, outer diameter, then a smaller one, uh, inner diameter to connect the two. And then put another coupler on the back side, squeeze them together with glue. And now this cannot be pulled out. So that's kind of where we're at today. So I've got to get that thing serviced again to finish our line so I can uh, get everything leveled off and everything put in here. So that's kind of where we're at with our septic system. And then, uh, not to mention tying in that extra, you know, four or five feet from there to the toilet. And uh, go from there. So here's what our little homestead area looks like now. Looking good. I came over, I took the rake, put the rake on the back of the tractor, 
and I don't know if you remember uh, in one of the last videos, they were uh, very large rocks, all kind of large rocks and stuff, and it was very, very difficult to even walk through. So I came through, raked all of the rocks up, took all the rocks down to that pile over there. There was a ton of them. And uh, I took up the, uh, let me see, we had some of this uh, um, plastic piping and stuff here. Had my ethernet wires and stuff that were coming out of here. So I basically uh, used the tractor and helped basically rip up uh, and pull the ground up around that. Got my ethernet wire and stuff out. Got the copper piping out and used that same conduit to bury my um, antenna wire. Uh, get, give it some more resilience against UV. So I just came out of the ground here. Gave it some resilience against it so that if we need to replace the wire we can actually disconnect it right there bring it down and then it can be run directly from here and it goes basically from here um, all the way down you should be able to see the trench right to the edge there and then I'm going from that edge <clears throat> and this conduit here was what I'd pulled up from the other uh, propane line, so I used that, this conduit, the leftover conduit, uh, to run this line here. As you can see, it's right there. Oh, right here, sorry. And then it comes out of the ground underneath the house. And then I follow it down. All the way to here and then my wires go inside so I've got to uh, get these uh, closed up a little bit better so that they don't get gnawed on by an animal or something like that or wrapped or who knows what and then we got to get all the stuff skirted uh, got to get all that skirted I moved our front porch steps from the trailer uh, in here temporarily which is doing a good job so far I need to lift this side up just about an inch or so just so that it's level but this is working well for here and then the materials that are left over materials that are left over here that was going to be for the rear deck we've got uh, let's see two by two by eight by eights I believe um, so we're going to do no, I think these are two by ten by eights so we use a 2 by 10 by 8 and then I'll, I'll go ahead and start um, putting them in the front. So our deck, our future deck, is going to start somewhere, I don't know, somewhere around here in front of the kitchen window so that we're staying away from the bathroom and then basically have it wrap around to this end and then right here eventually is going to be a sleeping porch 14 feet out all the way to the front the roof is going to be covering that and it'll be screened in so that we can sleep outside in the, the nice uh, temperate weather and stuff and just it'll be another um, sleeping area another area for relaxing outside so all screened in here so that we can be inside without the bugs and stuff. And then the deck and stuff will come out to here and go over that way. So what I'm going to do is use that material to go ahead and start with our decking this way. So we'll start uh, probably here and work our way over. Maybe just if we can have a little bit extra cash, um, get some more of that material and then bring the decking all the way out to here. And then we'll figure out how to get the decking to go around the edge. And then eventually all we got to do is just buy the decking boards. So it'll be a deck that will then turn into an additional screened-in room. This will be all, all deck and stuff here. And then a screened-in room right there for our sleeping porch. So, and then I might. I thought about while we're doing that. 
go ahead and add more uh, decking and stuff out here and then make it around the corner so you can actually walk out the back on the deck around the front on the side here and then be able to go from front to back while you're still on your deck we'll see that just starts adding up in money but adding some rat I mean uh, joists and stuff here and some piers uh, easy to do and then as we have the money we can just add the decking board and uh, give us a, a nice uh, outdoor experience outside of the house and, and a larger area to entertain and stuff like that outside of the outside of the house so coming along here's one of the other things we just had to do um, Kelly went into uh, Tulsa the other day to drop off one of the puppies and uh, we ended up uh, shredding the back uh, passenger right tire on the way in town um, and then on the way out of town after dropping off the puppy ended up blowing uh, this front tire here so um, anyway we ended up uh, selling one of our speaker systems and amp to one of our friends and then just gave us enough cash to buy the uh, new tires and stuff over here um, but then we drove back into Tulsa to get the rest of uh, Kelly's mom's stuff that's on the trailer here and uh, then we ended up going to just pick up one uh, cabinet to finish off the center island in the kitchen and then I worked out a, um, a trade with the guy where he'd come back and do a photography shoot for maybe some of the other cabinets he just wanted them out of there um, so we have a couple hundred dollars and uh, to, I think $250 or whatever and then we ended up getting the rest of the cabinets and stuff here that we can use for the mudroom and other stuff so let's go look at those real quick okay so a whole bunch of lily and stuff here we got uh, the back of the um, car that had a whole bunch more of her stuff but here was the jewel of the event of the trip this time so uh, we're able to get a cabinet with multiple doors. I'll, I'll be able to pull this out and show you the stuff later. But this is going to be part of our center island. And I believe we've got four drawers um, right there that we probably will put right beside this, maybe. And that will be part of the center island. Um, we got a Lazy Susan to actually put into uh, the corner if this works and fits, which would be awesome if it does. Um, this uh, cabinet here goes directly above the Lazy Susan in the corner, which is a ton of space. And then we got some wall cabinets right here, right there, and right there uh, for the mudroom so we can start putting some of our stuff away in there. And another wall cabinet right there, which um, I don't know, we, gotta, we, we can kind of figure out the combination of how it's going to work. But uh, pretty nice stuff. They uh, just kind of remodeled their entire uh, kitchen area and stuff, and um, they were getting rid of these fairly cheap. He just would like, wanted to get them out of their uh, garage and uh, or their kind of shop area so they have more space to work in. So we just worked out a deal with them and and just a little bit of cash and uh, a little bit of trade, and we've got more. Uh, cabinetry and stuff like that to work with so pretty excited about that okay all right well thanks for uh, keeping up with our shenanigans and our story here um, today again is November 29 2018 and this is kind of an update from the homestead um, we'll be doing more work on the inside trying to get things put up and then uh, next round is we got a lot of next rounds but try to get the bathroom finished as much as possible get the toilet going so get the toilet going, get the bathroom finished, get a shower, uh, ability to take a shower and stuff in there. And um, and then now we have some more cabinetry and stuff to work out and figure out a way to get things put in, uh, more things put away in the kitchen and get our center island going. So very happy about the way things are working out. Um, now things are slow, but you know, think about this. We broke ground January uh, 10th to actually start building um, and scraping that area to start putting our piers in for the foundation. And on November 11th, our, um, our anniversary, we moved in to the house unfinished. However, it's no mortgage payment. 
no no house payment. And the only thing we have is the the um, propane bill, um, which is you know filling that tank once a year or so, maybe a little bit less once we get the wood stove going, and uh, internet and phone, plus uh, you know some groceries and uh, insurance and things like that. So you tell me where you can go and have a living space that is uh, passive solar that can provide your needs without breaking the bank and without having to pay for a mortgage for 30 years. I don't know where you can do that. So that's part of this whole process of the journey of, of having the, you know, the, the last home that you're going to build uh, maybe and um, the thought process of you know, I, would, I will live today like others won't so I can live tomorrow like others can't. And that's, that's the idea. So, anyway, we do have uh, a lot of stuff going on, but thanks for watching the channel, and we'll catch up with you soon.